let's get this thing going. Uh, I'm on an hour, is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, an hour? Okay, so we're having to work fast on time. So anyway, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pete Hardy. I am the owner of the facilities that you'll be training in today here in San Antonio. And I've uh, been in the fitness industry uh, longer than I've been, 47 years. And uh, so I have been selling memberships and running fitness centers and now martial arts center uh, for that long. 20 years in Kramagam, 47 years in the fitness center. So, uh, worked for the two largest fitness organizations in the world for a long time. Before I went out on my own. So through the years, uh, things have started to change on how you want to present yourself and market your memberships to people. They become a lot more educated, certainly with the internet and all the information that people can get now. They're as educated as they can possibly get when they show up at your front door. So the old ways of doing business, browbeating people and, uh, and dealing strictly about money offers, discounts, and throwing goodies and goodie back uh, really isn't necessarily the way to do it anymore. I mean, we certainly want to have some incentives, but it's better to get well informed and sell the product and what their needs and interests are than trying to gimmick your way through marketing memberships. Okay? So this course I believe is set up from start to finish when you meet and greet a guest to take them all the way through touring your facilities and, uh, and closing the deal. So the first thing I want to tell you, if, if you have a piece of paper, uh, draw this for me. Okay, so I want you to draw a circle. Okay, it's going to seem a little stupid, but draw a big circle, about the size of a head. Okay, and in that, in that, which would now be a face, draw a big old mouth, great big mouth. Okay, draw another circle. Okay, draw another one somewhere on the same page. All right, and on the outside of that head, draw two great big ears. All right, so the first one that you drew with the big mouth is a salesperson. Okay, big mouth, never shuts up, never listens to what the consumer wants, and all they do is run their mouth, talk about me, and that's about it. Okay, the other one that you drew with big ears is a professional closer. Someone who listens to what your consumer wants, what their needs are, what their interests are. Okay? And helps guide them down the path to make an intelligent decision to do something that they wanted to do in the first place, but you want them to do it at your place. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, so you need to learn how to keep your mouth shut, have leading questions, and let them talk. The tendency is to shut them off. You're so anxious to, to share your knowledge and your skill and show off your facility that you don't listen to them. So by the time that you get to the table, you don't have a clue about what it was they were interested in, what their needs were, what their fears are, what their concerns are, because you did all the talking. So you want to make sure that you start with that, okay? So the most critical part of closing a membership with somebody, selling a membership, whatever your terminology may be, okay, is going to be which part of this when they come through the door? Listen. Pardon me? Listen. The first thing. What's the first most important thing when your prospective guest comes through the door? Greet them. Greeting them. Okay. How's that greeting going to work? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. How should it also be a company? What else should be behind that handshake? Confidence. Okay, great. What else should be behind that? Yes. Knowing their name. Exactly. Okay, name. Handshake, eye contact, and using their name. Once you start using that name, how often should you use that name from there on out? Every single chance you can get. You are constantly using their name. Because what you're trying to create when you start this first handshake, eye contact, and using their name, what are you trying to create? Report. Pardon me? Report. Relationship. Report, but what's the most important thing? Relationship. Friendship. <coughs> friendship. You want to create a friendship right away. What's the most difficult thing to say to a friend? No. No. 
Exactly. So I want to start that friendship as fast as I possibly can. One of the most common mistakes that every center makes, and I understand that you guys have different situations and, and, and how you operate, if you have full-time people in uh, market memberships or not, is that you walk right up and get in their face. Okay? Immediately, as soon as they walk through the door. When what you should do is you should have some means of some form Mine is set up or on the front of my release form is here. It's NCR paper on the back. And when they fill out their name and address and that critical information, it goes through. But the rest of it are going to be the questions that they're going to answer on what their interests are at SDW. Okay, and they will fill that out. This process should happen. If you want to be at your best and have a higher chance of closing people, this should be something they do before you ever greet and meet them. Ever. This should be done. So now once this is done, the way we operate, the receptionist will take it, give it to the advisor. I do not call my people salespeople. It doesn't make good sense. They're advisors, which you truly are. Your advisors and your counselors, you're not necessarily salespeople. <coughs> Think about it. Think of all the conversations that you've had with people. How much time did you actually spend selling anything? You spent all the time talking about what, when, where, who, past, present, future, what my needs are. That's not selling. That's counseling. Once this has all been filled out, then I will look at it as the advisor. <coughs> I will get their name engraved in my brain. I will look at their age so I know how to approach them and the amount of the type of conversation I should be having with them. That conversation with an 18-year-old certainly isn't the same as it is with a 50-year-old. The greet and meet should be different. I will find some common interest that I can see here that we can deal with when I first meet them. Hello, Mr. Jones. My name is Pete Hardy. It's a pleasure to have you here. I see that you live right down the block. You don't live too far from Tom, Mary, Joe, Sue, whoever else I may have there that are all members that live in his neighborhood. Did that create interest? Something common to them, something they know. They start getting comfortable. Maybe it's a place where they work. Maybe it's where they've worked out. Maybe it's anything that I can immediately start a conversation and start working inside their space. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so the more I have in common with them on that very first handshake, the faster I create this friendship and relationship. Okay, and then I start working it from there. All right, so this this should be something that you do first before they are you greet and meet them. So you can come up and start using their name immediately, and once again have something in common. All right. Once I do that, okay. Once again, this is how I operate. How you operate, your facilities are different, it's entirely going to be up to you. We will immediately take them and sit them down at our desk and get some basic information, quick basic information, on what their interest was. Just quick. Two, three minutes. That's it. Okay? And that's if they're a looker. If they're a trier, we're going to do the same thing and then go get them into class. Okay? So you have two different types of people that show up. One's going to come in and take a class immediately. The other end just wants to see what you have, so you have to deal with those different things this time. But even if they're going to take a class, you want to sit down and get to know them. So when they are done with the class, I have a place to start with them. A place to start my conversation with them, as opposed to having to start all over again. All right? Once I get that basic information, then we will start our tour and start taking them around. All right? So when you take your tour, here are the things that you need to accomplish. Okay? You need to write these things down. All right? We're going to go past, we're going to go to their past, their past, the present, okay? And then you will eventually get to the future, but not yet, all right? You're also going to get to how, what, when, where, and why. And you're going to use those till you have beat them to death. So I start my tour and I'm starting to establish the convenience. So I see their address, I know where they work and what their address are. What questions should I be asking them as I am walking and talking? I have their home address and I have where they work. And certainly you should know your area. If they say they work somewhere, IBM, you should know where that is relative to your business. What information do you need to gather at that point? You need to know Come on, what jump on it. Right or wrong, jump on it. When they're going to work out, what's the best time for them to work out? Because that determines whether it's a day program, evening program, weekend program, etc. 
Okay, be a little ahead of yourself, time. Okay, but what do I need to know first? What their goals are, maybe? What their goals nope, are? No, not there yet. I'm working, on, I'm working on where they work and their home address. What they are to the school and their location. Exactly. What's going to be more convenient for you? Are you going to be coming from home or are you going to be coming from work? Okay, you need to establish that. Is this a person who's going to go to work and then come to your facility? Okay, or is this a person who's going to come from home in the morning and come to your facility? Or is this a person who's going to come from work, go home, turn around and come back and come to your facility? That's extremely important because one of the number one things that people don't buy is the lack of Time. convenience. The lack of convenience. If it's not convenient, they're not coming. So when you start picking locations, you better be smart about what you're, where you're picking your location. It's got to be easy in, easy out. Easy in, easy out. If it's not easy in, easy out, they don't show up. Okay, plain and simple. Now that I've established the fact that it's convenient for them from wherever it is, home or work, now I need to establish the time frame. Okay? Understand, Mr. Jones, are you going to be coming from work? What time of day do you get off? And how many days a week do you plan on showing up? Okay? How, what, when, where, and why? How, what, when, where, and why? You run that through your head till you beat it up. All right? So once I've established the fact that it's convenient, I've established the fact that this is the time of day they're going to come, because you need to know that why. Why do you immediately need to know this information? Classes you have on yes, your class, class schedule. Yeah. If you don't have anything anywhere in that, then you're done. Right there, you're done. You're absolutely, positively done. If you don't have any classes that are convenient for them at that point, what are you going to sell them? Okay. You might as well end it right there and quit wasting your time and their time. Okay. So I've got that out of the way. So I know that it's convenient to home or it's convenient to work. I know I have classes that are convenient for me at the time frame and the days that they're looking to train. So I've got that out of the way. I've got those excuses out of the way. There's no such thing as an objection. You guys have read every sales book out there because I have read them all. I've been to the best sales schools in the world. People have invested millions of dollars in me okay, to teach me, train me through the fitness industry. Is this excuse, not objections. They're excuses. How many of you think that people actually show up at your front door that they're not interested? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Exactly. Anyone and everyone who walks through your doors are interested. You guys all consider yourselves normal, regular folks, right? So would you go out of your way in traffic to go find a business, finally find it, find a place to park, get out of the car, Go inside knowing that somebody's going to try to sell you something if you're not interested. Who does that? We don't, I don't do that. So you got to get that out of your brain that I'm not interested. Because the minute they get there, they are already doing what? Backing up. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to get in shape, you know, I want to learn how to fight, I want to learn how to do this. They walk through the door and they're like, oh. Reality sets in. This, I remember now that this is actually work. I actually have to work to get in shape. I actually have to train to learn how to defend myself. And they immediately start backing up, and you need to understand that. They're looking for a way out, but they're also looking for what? They're looking for a way in. They're looking for someone who will take an interest in them and convince them that this is something they need to do. They want you to do your job. And you need to understand that. They want you to be that counselor. They want you to sit down and understand them. Empathy, sympathy, and whatever their needs are to help them and convince them to do something they want to do in the first place, but you need to kick them over the edge. That is your job. Or whatever it is that you teach. So as I go on that tour, Okay, and I have my list of questions that I'm going through. All right, so now I've established convenience, and I've established days and time. Okay, what else do I need to start establishing? Immediately. What's the next logical thing you should start finding out? Can they afford it? Nope. Money, is, money should never be an issue. Why they want to trade? Exactly. 
what brings you here today? Okay, so they're going to go, oh, I want to learn how to, I want to learn how to fight. Okay, or oh, I want to get in shape. How many of you guys are, do fitness as well? Raise your hand. Okay, so the third year is strictly in the martial art industry, the MMA industry, all right? So I want, to, I want to learn how to defend myself. I want to learn how to fight. Is, it, is that a valid reason? Sure. Is that something you can sell? Yeah. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. How are you going to sell that? So what should you start digging into? Why do you want to learn how to fight? Exactly. How, what, when, where, and why. I want to learn how to fight. I want to learn how to defend myself. Okay, what's your first name? Jason. Jason, well tell me, what recently happened to you, okay, that now you're interested in learning how to defend yourself? What, what recently happened to you? Uh, crazy people moving into my neighborhood. Crazy people moving into his neighborhood. Okay, does that give me a little bit more information to be able to sell this guy? What kind of crazy people? Uh, people walking around at two in the morning yelling at invisible people. Okay. And what kind of incidents has happened in your neighborhood that where law enforcement and things have to, have to show up to deal with this? Uh, just people with mental health issues. You know. So you've had, you've had law enforcement show up sure. in your neighborhood. Okay. Does that give me more information? Yeah. Why is there? What do I? What What do you hear coming out of my mouth? How? What? When? Where? And why? You beat it up. It's not just why. Whatever he says. Whatever the answer is, I'm looking for a how, what, when, where, and why on that answer. Whatever the next answer is, I'm looking for a how, what, when, where, and why on that answer. You guys tracking with me, yes? So it's just not one how and I'm done. It could be how, how, and how. Okay, it could be where, where, and where, and why, 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 and why. And you bleed it to death. You bleed it to death. So you can't find another one of those how, what, when, where, and whys to ask on that particular question. We could have stayed on this for five minutes, at least. During that time that he's doing that, what should you be doing? Taking on this sheet, right here, that you should have, it should be on a clipboard, and you should have mastered your shorthand, and you're writing down every answer he gives you. Every single one of them. Corruption in the neighborhood. Law enforcement is coming out on a regular basis. Everything he says, you have to write it down. Everything. So I go from zero chances of selling this membership to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90, because there's no such a thing as a 100% closer. Okay. The more information I get that comes out of my consumer's mouth, the odds of you closing this and selling this membership go up. The more you think you're going to tell them why they need to be here, and you're going to dream up stuff, and you're going to tell them all the advantages of it, the less chances you have of selling that membership. I need to sell this man based on what he wants and what he's got in his mind and let him make that decision. You guys, have a look. You've probably never been to counseling, maybe some of you have, but if you've been to drug counseling, if you've been to alcohol counseling, if you've been to marital counseling of any kind, okay, what do they let you do? What do you do when you go to counseling? You talk. What kind of talking do you do? Yeah, you just ramble. Okay. And by the time you get through with counseling, who has made the decision to change your life? With you rambling, the counselor sitting on the other side telling you back exactly what you just said. So by the end of the counseling, who actually made the decision to change their life? You did. You did. They didn't change your life. You changed your life. You just needed to hear somebody else say it back to you. How many times did it happen to all of you in your lifetime? I just needed to hear it. Right? That's no different than what you people do for a living. You need to listen to them. Okay, now I know, now I know what his interest is. I know what his motivation is. In professional sales terms, in the books, when you read them, that is considered the hot button. Okay, now I'm going to eat that up. I'm going to eat it up and spit it out. Depending on how big your facilities are and what you have to offer, 
All right? If that's it, and I'm a traditional school, I'm sort of done, yes? All right? I'm done right there. I don't have much further to go. I've established time. I've established convenience. I've established why they're here. Now whose turn is it? Your turn. Okay? Now it's your turn. Now you become the future. I established the past, the present, and now it's the future. Okay? The future is going to be how my program is uniquely different and how I am going to take care of you and how we're going to get you trained so that you feel comfortable on defending yourself and your family if that's the facility you're in. Okay? That's how things go down. That's how you establish rapport with people and sell memberships. And if you want to get that closing percentage up, there is no other way to do it. What you're going to find is you're going to have people that sell, including yourselves, and you're, you're going to get lucky every now and again. And every now and again, you're going to close one without doing any of that. And then you're going to get in that pattern. I'm talking to any of you that have other people working for you that sell your memberships. You have to have a system. If you don't have a system, an in-stone system that your people follow, when it's broken, you cannot possibly, on God's green earth, fix it. So when all of you get in financial trouble, and you're not selling memberships, and people aren't showing up, and you go, fix it, fix what? I don't know what the hell you're doing. I don't know what your people are saying. I don't know where they're going south. How can you fix it? There's only one way to fix it. This is what I did for five years, take over financially distressed centers. I fired everybody. Not just some of them. I would walk in and fire the entire staff. We started running ads before that, and I would rehire and retrain so that I had people that knew my system, our system. I knew what they were going to say, how they were going to say it, when they were going to say it. So when we were broken, I could fix it. Am I making sense to everybody? Yeah. But if you're all just slinging mud, how can it get fixed? I've had people hire me to come in and try to fix their business, and I go, well, show me your system. I don't have a system. <laughs> what do you expect me to do? I can't fix it. I can't tell you where your closers and your salespeople are going south because I have nothing to look at to see where they went south. I have no notes to see what they missed that they didn't find out past, presently, what's going on in them. Where they used to train, how they used to train, what was their success. And the fitness industry would be different. I want to know what gym they worked out in before. How long did they train in that gym? How many hours a day did you train in that gym? During that time you were in that gym, how much results did you get? What did you accomplish during that time? Okay, and since the time that you quit, whatever that lifespan is, maybe it's a year, two years since you stopped, what's exactly happened to you? Have you gained weight, put on weight, pant size, dress size? What exactly has changed? And I'm writing all that information down. So let me ask you, now that the, the, you're at this point where you're, you're at the, the point of making a decision, what has changed and what's motivating you now to get back in and start taking your step? What's changed? I need all that information. So if I don't have it, and I'm trying to fix somebody, which I'm constantly fixing my people, the first thing I do is I go sit down at their desk, and they have a book that has all of these in it. <coughs> they have to keep them in a notebook, and I start going through them. And I start seeing what they've missed. They didn't ask how, what, when, or why. They didn't find the convenience. They didn't find out the past. They didn't find out what the results were in the past. They didn't find this. They didn't find that. They didn't find this. All they did is got lucky one day and somebody came in and threw a freaking checkbook at them and bought a membership and they think that's how it can happen every time from that point on and they shortcut everything. That's what happens. Once you have a system in place, you cannot allow anybody to change that system, including you. I've been selling the same way for 46 years and I've never changed it. Okay? The wording has changed, the methods have changed, the questions have changed. But the process of getting information from people has not changed in order to get them to make an intelligent decision to do something good for themselves. And that's what you're trying to get to. Okay? So when I sit down with them, okay, I went on my tour. I'm sorry, I thought I turned it off. So I take my tour, meet, greet, take them through, okay, the whole process. And now it's time to sit down at the desk and make that decision. What are you going to do? 
what, what are you going to do from that point? Once I sit down with them, I've walked around with them, I've shaken their hand, I've walked around, I've asked how, what, when, where, and why, I've got the information, what am I doing at the desk? You want to remind them why they came in and also... How do you do that? Well, you got to go back on your notes. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to take this sheet that I had. Okay, if you don't have one, just use a scratch piece of paper, but get something typed up that makes sense. I'm going to go through it here, and I'm going to read everything they said. It's not me. Okay? Mr. Jones, when we were walking around, you told me this is going to be convenient for you for work. You're going to come from work, and you're going to be here around 6 o'clock, and I have classes on these days, these days, and these days at this time. So that's going to be convenient for you. when you agree? Okay. What do I want to start happening from this point? You agree? Say yes. <laughs> the little bobby thing on the front of your car. Okay, I need this. I need this to start happening. Okay, and if this isn't happening, don't move on to the next thing. Okay, everybody caught with me? Yes. yes if you're not getting that head bobbing on, then you don't have their attention, and you're not on the right track. All right. As we were walking around, okay, and discussing what your interests are and why you're here. You told me it's because of the things that are happening in your neighborhood, and this is going on, and that is going on, and that is really what's got you motivated and concerned about helping protect yourself and your family. Is that correct? What do I want to see happen? I don't want yeses. I'll be honest with you. I don't look for yeses. I'll get a yes or no, but why I am looking for the head moving. Because I know I have what? Their undivided attention. So what if I get this? Uh, can I borrow you? Okay, pull this chair out for me. No, actually, just stay right there. Okay, scoot up. Okay, and, and we're talking. All right, and we're in the middle of this conversation, and all of a sudden she leans back. What happened? I just lost her. Okay, I just lost her. What should you do? Bring her back in. No, 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 no. What should you immediately do? Lean back with her. Back off. If she wanted out of my space, I hit a nerve. I didn't lose her. I reminded her of something. It was one of those oh shit moments. Okay, Whatever it may be. In the, in the, in the fighting world, the martial art world, the self-defense world, the fitness world. Something hit a nerve. I already had her. Are you, are you with me, right? Otherwise, she'd always been where? Back there, with her arms crossed. Okay? And some of them doing this. Doing that. You, you've had nothing. Your tour, obviously, was horrible. Okay? It was probably a tour that was all about you. All right? So I'm going to back up and take the pressure off. And then I'm going to start talking again and revisiting what we talked about. And going back over these questions and making her comfortable again and moving on to the next thing because I'm sure wherever I was at that point was something that hit a nerve. And I want to make sure I move on and get her comfortable again. All right? And when I do, then I'm going to do what? Then I'm going to lean back in and see if I can pull her back in. Okay? And I do that personally, professionally. By drawing and writing stuff or having them come up front and draw and write stuff. Whatever it may be. Okay. Write this down for me. Okay. Draw this for me. Whatever it may be. I'm going to hand her a pen and make her come back up front again. And get something on that piece of paper. Or circle the thing that you think is the most interesting thing to you right now. And get her back in and see if she'll stay. If she does, then I do what? I keep going. Okay? I keep going. I keep going right back through the questions. I, I, push, I push past that. You guys with me, yes? Yeah. Just want to make sure. If you're not, let me know. Okay? So now I keep going. I'm going to get into where I'm explaining the future. You are their new future. You are. Let me get it make sense like this. Every big box gym, okay, and you can put yourself in this if, if you're in a martial arts school, 
is exactly the same. All of them are exactly the same. Because they are all what? What are they? If you were in my, my, my biggest world, all big box gyms are what? Self-service boxes. All of them. Gold's Gym, LA Fitness, Planet Fitness, whatever they are, they're all self-service boxes. Which means you go buy a membership and you're on your own unless you want to pay $75 to $100 an hour to hire a professional trainer to train you. Otherwise, it is a self-service box. So if you're not self-motivated, self-educated, then you're not ever going to get the results you're looking for because you don't have the motivation and you don't have the knowledge. That's why everybody you see has how many fitness center cards on their keychain? Yeah. Two, three, four. Because they think what? The next, one the next one's going to be better than the next one, and the next one's going to be better than the next one, and the next one's going to be better than the next one. And it's not. As a matter of fact, today I can assure you, because I know that industry extremely well, if I were to blindfold you and take you to any one of them and open, take the blindfold off, you would know which one you're in because they all buy the same equipment from the same people and they got the same format. You wouldn't even know. So in order for me to push past that, who, who was the, who's failing? Is it the program or is it the person? Is it the program or is it the person? No different with you guys. Is it the other martial arts school or is it the student? Whose fault is it? It's the business, not the person. You can never make a prospective client seem like they're, they're failures, or you couldn't get them to join for nothing. I need to make sure they understand it was where you were going. They didn't have the right program. They didn't take the right interest in you. They weren't guiding you down the right path. They didn't get the right measurements, the body fat. They didn't get this. They didn't get that. Whatever it may be, you cannot make this person feel like a failure Otherwise, they're going to continue to go down that road. You guys understand that? If you keep making me feel like a failure, I'm never going to make that decision to move forward. So if I've been in other martial arts schools, and I was not content, I was not happy, I wasn't getting the results, I don't think I was learning anything, whose fault was it? The other school. I know you don't want to talk bad about other schools. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about your future. You guys, you need to track with me. You become the new future. You're the future. Let me tell you how we are uniquely different. If you're not uniquely different, then why don't you know why you're here? If all of you in your city are exactly the same and all the schools are exactly the same and everybody's the same and they walk in the door and go, yeah, we're just like John down the road, why are you people coming to these seminars? If you want to be the best, you want to grow your business, then you need to be uniquely different. You need to be special. And you damn well better be. Okay? Not just lip service. Period. Okay? Everybody with me? Otherwise, you're all the same. A Taekwondo school is a Taekwondo school is a Taekwondo school is a Taekwondo school. Everybody agree? Yes? Yes. Just yes, right? What makes it different? You, 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 and you are the only people that make a difference. Look, I'll tell you, and I'll take this, I'll put a million dollars up. You go up in a 20,000 square foot facility, deck it out. Deck it out. I'll go open a 5,000 square foot box, and I'm going to put rocks in it and paint them. I'm going to get sticks and put them in there and paint them. I'm going to get ropes in there and paint them. I'm going to have five of the best trainers in the world go to work for me, and I will kick your ass every day, dollar for dollar. Every day. Won't even be a contest. And you have a 20,000 square foot, multi-million dollar facility. Why am I going to win? Because I'm going to out-service the crap out of you. When my members come in, they're always going to get a handshake. What's your first name? Nikita, welcome. Good to see you today. How's the family? How's John doing? How's Mary? How's the kids? How's soccer going? How's that going? Now get in there and get changed and come out because of yesterday you were pushing a blue rock. Can you believe it? A blue rock and you started with a yellow rock and you are up to a blue rock. So let's get going. It's a rock for God's sakes. But I made that rock what? 
Special! And she goes, oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Well, they're over there pushing dumbbells and barbells and kettlebells and everything else. It's, it's all about each one of you. And I'll be blunt and honest because I always am. <clears throat> People call me up all the time. Well, yeah, man, I just opened my new facility. You know, and I put $50,000 worth of swing mats down. I go, are you nuts? Oh, it's beautiful. I go, are you nuts? These are people who hire me. Why did you do that? Well, because they're swaying mats. Who cares? Who cares? Everybody raise your hand that anybody who has come in your facility that did not join because you did not, have, and I'm not picking Swain out, just came to mind, because you did not have Swain mats. Who cares? I put puzzle mats in. Have been since I've been in business. Nobody cares. And after three years, you know what? I flip them over and I have brand new mats all over again. <laughs> okay? It's the best investment in the world. Can't flip those other mats over. And they last forever. And I beat mine up because we're high volume. You should have done what with that money? Marketing, for God's sakes. You got to bring people through the door. So you, you just threw away $50,000 when you could have put $5,000 worth of flooring in. And that left you $45,000 to market your business and get through tough times. It's not how pretty it is. It's how clean it is. And the atmosphere that they have when they walk through the door. So if you are building facilities and you want to build these Taj Mahals, don't do it. Save your cash for what you need it for. How many of you been to my crossroads location? Okay. Is it beautiful? No. Okay. No. It's <coughs> extremely clean, very well maintained, but it is functional. Functional is the key word. All my walls are plywood, so I can slam you in any wall. We're not going through sheetrock. I did that on purpose. Six feet from the top of every wall is not finished. Why do you think I did that? Why? No, no, no. Two, two, three, four feet of sheetrock that wouldn't change anything or plywood. Why do you think I left all the walls unfinished at the top? Because you don't use them. No. Here's because here. every room has what inside of it? People. Music. Music and people make what? Noise. What is exciting to a human being when they walk through the door and hear people going, rah, 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 one more, two more, three more, let's go, rah. What do you think happens to those people when they walk through my door? Yeah, they get sucked right into it. Holy shit, what's going on? But if I closed all those rooms up, like some folks do when they build studios, and make them extremely quiet, and I walk through the door, don't make it work, nobody say that, don't move. And I walk in and it's like, definitely quiet. Does that excite me? Does that motivate me? Does that suck me on through the door? No. All of you have been out at night one time or another, you walked in the bar, you opened the door, and it was like, nope, and you walked out, because you were looking for what? People and excitement and music and noise and something that was happening. But you open up and there's nothing going on. You turn around and walk out. What do you think they do with you? I want to walk through the door and feel something. <clears throat> feel something. That was intentional. You'll see it this one as well. It was intentional. I want all that chaos and noise going on. I want to suck them in when they come through the door. It's intentional. Okay. So we are sitting down at the desk, and we have went through how, what, when, where, and why. We went through all their notes and read them back to them. Okay. So when I've gone through all of those notes and read them back to you, okay, I'm going to ask, based on all of the things that you and I talked about on that tour, okay, everything that you said you that you were interested in, is there anything I have missed? Anything at all? Let me show you the two programs based on your needs that I think would be best for you. How many of you use that? How many of you just throw something out? Raise your hand. It's 
what you're here for. Okay? So all of you go through that process. You tell them based on what they're interested in. Okay? I'm going to show you two of my programs that I think is going to work for you based on what you want. This person. Because if your memberships are just for anyone, what makes them special? Now, how am I going to make her special if I go, here's one that, here's, here's stuff that you can pick from that anybody would want. Does that make sense to anybody? How many of you have multiple different types of memberships? Raise your hand. How many of you only have one? Bad idea. Okay, bad idea. You need at least two. Two. It's not that hard to come up with two. Okay, whatever it is, come up with two. People like to make decisions. This is it, this is all you got. How many of you go to a car lot and let's say it's a Chevy lot? And every one of those cars are the same color, same interior, same equipment. Where are you going to go next? Someplace. To the next guy that has stuff that's different that I can look at and compare it with. All humans are the same way. Can't be one fits all. Not your industry, not my industry. It cannot be. You need to let them make a decision. Okay? I have eight memberships. Eight. And by the time we get through on the tour, the advisor will have made their decision on the two that are going to be best for them. I'm different than you guys. I have a huge fitness program. I have my self-defense program. I have my bag program. I have my advanced training program. I have a lot of different things. But still, I need to gather this information so when I show them two, it's the two that are most logical and, and that are going to fit their needs the best. So if you only have one, you need to come up with a second one. So when I sit down and do that, I show them the two that are best. What do I do now? I've laid two out. Two only. Only two out. What do I do now? What's the next thing I'm going to ask? Come on, jump in, right or wrong. Of these two memberships, which do you think would be best for you? A or B? In my case, it could be a platinum or a silver. And then what are you going to do? You're going to shut up and never say another word again. Okay? And I don't care if it's 30 seconds and five minutes because I've sat there for five minutes in my career. Never said a word. We just looked at each other. Okay, back and forth. You can't trade. You can't give in. Okay? As soon as they pick one, if they pick one, they go, hey, what do you do? Let's do it. No. What? I'll sell. Oh, no. no. They just made a financial decision. Why are you going to throw more money at them? You do that after all the paperwork's done. I can always start over on paperwork. Okay. What do you do? Where did we start this tour? Handshake. What's the first thing we did? Handshake. Yeah. Day! Yeah. Great. Welcome. Feel the difference in that handshake? The I made a commitment handshake is not quite as much as the hello handshake. Okay. And I'm going to look them right in the eyes. And I'm going to make sure when I grab that hand, I'm going to go deep inside between that web and index finger and thumb. I'm going to dive right in there. I'm going to close it up and I'm going to secure it with a nice tight squeeze. I'm letting her know that you're not backing up, okay, at that point. As soon as I shake that hand, what do I do? You should have all your paperwork in your desk, in order, ready to go, and it is coming out, and you are moving pens and paperwork back and forth. The next thing in her hand should be what? A pen, and not a 29-cent bet, okay? You can use those, these. Okay, as you're touring people and taking notes and people register in, but do you want to hand this to people who you're asking to spend 500, 600, 700, 800, 900 thousand dollars? You want to give them one of these? No. How many of you have bought a house? Raise your hand. Okay. Do they give you a 29 cent pick at the mortgage company? What do they give you? A really nice pen that feels really good that you normally get to keep. Okay. I know you're not buying a house, but maybe in their mind it is a house. So keep good pens, cheap pens. Good pen stays in your desk to hand them for closing. Use these for everything else because people will steal them without a doubt. Okay? All right? Everybody tracking with me, yes? All right, so now I've got that going. You have a flow of paperwork. 
You should know it and your people have to be trained. This is how the flow of paperwork. Don't get up and go get paperwork. Have, have at least two packets in every desk ready to go. We're on top of the desk in one of those little files. Ready to go, all of it, boom, boom, boom. Everything's in order, okay? And then at that point, once that starts, what should happen? What's the common mistake that everybody makes when the deal is closed? Common mistake, all of you make it. You shut up. You shut up. You've been yakking and yakking and asking and showing interest and taking interest in them and talking to them and laughing with them and cutting up with them and finding out about their past and their present and all of a sudden you're getting ready to get their money and you shut up. What's happening in her brain? It's time for doubt. Do, 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 do. Michael Jackson backing up. Okay? They start backing up. You're letting them start thinking about what they've done and they're not real secure. They start getting insecure again. So once I start this process and the pen's going, what should you be doing? Talking. You should have your paperwork moving like this. Boom, boom. Okay, we got that one down. Let's get this one down. Let's get this one started. Let's get this one started. And as you're reviewing paperwork here, I'm going to give you three guest classes so you can give those to your friends. Let me go ahead and review this and get this down. Go ahead and just write your name down there and your friend's name down there. And you just keep moving stuff back and forth. We're really excited about getting done. So when do you want to come in for your first training session? You want to do that uh, tonight or you want to do that tomorrow so I can make an appointment for you. And you are just moving paperwork and talking. Keeping them occupied and keeping them comfortable that they have done what? They have made the right decision. Does that mean like? You have 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> that they have made the right decision. You guys understand that, yes? yes you can't just shut up. Or you can't do this. All right, great. Okay, awesome. Let's get started. I'll be right back. And you get up and leave because your paperwork is two miles down the road. And then you stop at the front desk and you chat with a couple of people. Or you run into one of your fellow instructors and you're chatting with them why she's doing what? <laughs> Back it up. Big time. Feeling what? Abandoned. Uncomfortable. You hit it on the head a minute ago. Yeah. This, and excuse my, my language, but it's just who I am. This asshole, okay, just convinced me to buy a membership and he gets up and just leaves me sitting here. Okay? I'm in a place I don't know. I don't know all these people. I don't know any of these people. He's getting ready to take my money, and he just walks away. So everything he told me up to this point was 100% BS because he's just left me there. How many of you have ever been in that situation where somebody just left you there? How many of you have been in that situation in a relationship, in a date? You went out and they just left you there because they went over there and talked to their buddies and just left you there, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, their buddies and just left you there. Remember what that felt like when you were abandoned. Okay. No difference. Especially if the man was here because he had concern about his personal safety and the safety of his family and you just walk away from him in a place that he doesn't know and he's not comfortable with. And he doesn't know the people. I know I'm repeating myself, but how is he feeling? Like he just made a bad decision. Like you're no different than every other martial arts school that he went to. And I'm not, I don't mean to be offensive. So please understand that. Before I sold a multi-million dollar fitness organization that I personally own and get into the Kramagop business and create the new concept that I have, I research your industry a lot. Okay? I didn't just sell out and go, oh shit, hope it works. A lot. I drove around, flew around the country, and talked to martial arts schools. And I mean, no offense. All of them. Every one of them. What do you think the conversation was when I walked in the door and said, tell me about your business. What do you think all I heard was? How great they were. Huh? Yes. Well, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed, I'm sorry, but I don't follow that industry a lot. Well, yes, I trained with Master Clark, and I've trained with Master This, and I've trained with Master That, and I've trained with Master This, and Master That did this for me, and Master That did for me, and I go, no, tell me about your business. And that's all they kept doing. That's all they, I'm not bullshitting you, that's all they kept doing. And you're right, it was all about me, and who I've trained with, and 
blah, blah, blah. And he, I didn't know any of them. And I didn't at the time. I didn't know any of them. I wasn't concerned, but I wasn't there for that. I wasn't wanted to know about your business. And that typically is what I see and have heard and people I've tried to help over the years. It's the same thing. It's all about who you trained with and what your credentials are. It's nothing about, let me tell you about my business, because a lot of people in the traditional martial arts industry don't know anything about their business. Okay? They don't know who their customers are. Do you know who your customers are? Do you? How many females do you have compared to males? Who knows? What's the ratio? Raise your hand if you know. If you don't know, that's why you're here, for God's sakes. What's the age groups of your females? What's the age group of your males? What zip code do your people live in? How many of them are married? How many of them are single? How many of them have children? Do you know all that information? Okay, you should. Otherwise, you don't know anything about your business. Nothing. How do you know who your consumer is? How do you know what your market is? How do you know what market you're not getting if you don't know that? If you don't know what zip code you're drawing from, how do you know what zip code that you want to go get that you're not drawing from? If I don't know how many women I have, how do I know how to run a marketing program? Do I need to be talking to men or do I need to be talking to women? How do you know? What's your message? How do you know? That's what I'm saying. You don't know your business. You should be able to answer all these things. Because that dictates where I spend my money. That dictates where I spend my other $45,000 that I saved that I didn't put in those stupid mats. And I don't mean anything bad about <laughs> my mats. Okay? That I could have put in to marketing. And putting that money over here and going, you know what? I'm 80% male. I need some females. I'm not going to talk about men anymore. I'm not going to market for men anymore. I'm going after the women. Okay. And I need, and I, all I have is 18-year-olds and 17-year-olds and 20-year-olds. And, and I need some 30s, 40s, and 50s. I need to go talking to them. I'm going to make a sense to all you guys. So if you don't know this information, then you don't know your business. You don't know it. Okay? And you can't fix it if it's broken, and nobody can fix it for you until you have all that information to make it better for you. And then during that process, as I'm fixing that information, I'm people on you that don't have cell memberships, you need to know how to talk to all those different age groups. I'm not going to talk to a 20-year-old the way I talk to a 30-year-old. I'm not going to talk to a 30-year-old the way I talk to a 40-year-old. I'm not going to talk to a 40-year-old the way I talk to a 50-year-old, and right down the line. Your conversations have to be different because all those age groups have different needs and different levels of fitness. Do you understand that? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay? So i got to take a 50-year-old man and talk to him like I would talk to this young man right here so that he can jump up and do fitting, spinning flying kicks and spinning back kicks and this and that. That 50-year-old man doesn't give a what right about that. <laughs> okay? He just wants to learn how to do what? Not Put some dude down and get out of there. Do you have that program? Because that was the problem with the traditional market industry for years. I don't know how much it's changed. And once again, I don't stick my nose in that business. I got my own, and I don't pay any attention to anybody else. I'll be perfectly honest. I don't care. I don't care. Why would I waste five minutes of my time worrying about what everybody else does? Most business owners do. Well, this guy over here is doing this, and this guy over here is doing that, and they're doing that over there. All of a sudden, 15, 20, 30 percent of your day is worried about somebody else's business other than your own, so 30 percent of your business is going to crack. Block it out. Don't care what anybody else does. Don't care. Don't care. Put 100 percent of energy and effort into your own business, not everybody else's business. So do you have a program for that? I assume that all you guys want to get the adult business. Mine is strictly adults. I started kids two years ago, maybe, three years ago. And I don't market them. I don't advertise them. I don't do anything with them. I'm over 400 plus because my adult base is so big. Okay? Not too hard. I'm not bragging. It just happened by accident. Okay? But that's where it's at. So now I'm learning how to deal with that. It wasn't something I wanted to do. Okay? But I am. It's different. You need but it is. I don't market that program. But if you want an adult program, do you have adult <laughs> programs? Or are you mushing all your adults into your kids' program because you're not going to grow your adult program if you do? Because you're not going to get a 50-year-old dude to show up with a bunch of 17, 18, 19-year-old kids. Simply isn't going to happen. Okay? Not on a large scale. Maybe a few. I'm talking thousands of members, not a few hundred of folks. Okay. So, 
we sat down, I went back, got my paperwork because I didn't have it there, and my girl is leaning back with her arms crossed, and I hear that typical, I don't know. Okay, now what do you do? Now what do you do? Go back. Yes! Yes! You go where? Right back to the top. Most of you are going to do this. Well, I'll tell you what. How about if I take 50 bucks off the startup fee, an initiation fee, or throw in a gear, or a partridge in a pear tree? What do you think? <laughs> right? So what most people do. I'm going to go right back to the start. Well, when we were going in, we started this tour, okay? We, when we first met, okay, you told me this was convenient to work. You're going to come after work. You're going to be here around 6 o'clock. You'll be able to train on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm going to go right back down the list again. Because what do I have to do? i got to reclose her all over again. I'm going to go back and reassure her in her mind that all the things that you said, I didn't say this, everybody understand that. Once you get on that train that you start dictating to her what she said and what you think she should do, which you all do, you lose. You lose. Because as adults, I don't want somebody telling me what to do or how to think. But I can't argue with what? My own words. You can't argue with your own words. You said this, and you said it, and I would be just like this. I wouldn't be standing up. I'd be in my chair leaning over, and you said that you wanted to do this, and this would be convenient. I'm pointing to her notes. I'm pointing to my notes. And I guarantee you, because I've done it for so long, I'm looking at them, and all of them have that look in their face of, crap. He's got me. I mean, I, I know what that look looks like. Okay? And I do have it. There's nowhere to go. Absolutely nowhere for them to run off to. Nowhere to go from that point. So I just have to reclose them. Anything they say, time, money, husband, spouse, try, see if I like it, is an excuse. Okay? It is not an objection. The only thing in the English language that means no is what? No. Is no. So as long as I hear, oh, I want to talk about my husband. Oh, I want to try it out. Oh, I want to look at other places. Oh, I don't know if I have the time. It is an excuse because what ha what's happened is you haven't done your job. You on this side of the table have not done your job. You didn't gather enough information. You didn't ask enough questions. So you need to go right back and start that process all over again. Because if you did your job, the odds are more than 75% to 85% this person's going to get involved. On every single time that you sit down with somebody. Because I took the time and found out what their interest was, what their hot buttons were. I answered her. I created the future for her and what we're capable of doing. And I'm going to get this thing done. All right? The rules say, if you've been to sales schools, seven no's before you give it up. Seven. Seven times. And I agree with that 100%. Okay? 100%. You want to hear them say some excuse seven times before you give up. Back and forth. And when I started learning, people trained me on the, whatever documents we were using at the time, every time I got an excuse, I'd put a tick. And I'd start all over again. If I got another excuse, I'd put another tick. And I would not give up until I had seven ticks. And I've had people sit there and go, well, why are you putting those little ticks on their paper for? I just want to see how many times you're going to keep backing up before you say yes. They go, okay, let's just get this thing going. But it, people are procrastinators. Humans, just like all of you, are procrastinators. The things that you need the most, that will benefit you the most, whether it's self-defense, martial arts, fitness, operations, medical needs, go see the doctor, you will put off first. And you will put them off over and over and over again because it's human nature. Okay. So it is up to you to be a professional counselor professional advisor and counsel them and advise them and get them to make the decision that they were wanting to make in the first place when they first came through your door. That is your job, not selling memberships. Okay? You're satisfying people's needs and helping them accomplish something that they really want to accomplish in their lifetime. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you've picked some good stuff up from this, some things that you all of you need to change as far as your selection of memberships. At least have two. 
Uh, don't create four and five and then have your people that are selling memberships, including yourself, throw all five of them out there in front of them. You can eventually get to those if you need to. You start at the top and you work your way down if necessary from that point. All right? Awesome. Welcome to San Antonio. Thanks for your time.